Now they're known as the Pink Panthers. They're a gang that steals jewels from high-end stores all over the world. My intention was to kind of start with that Hollywood veneer, which is which is how they talk about themselves. I mean, they like to see themselves as Robin Hoody type characters. But then I wanted to, to subvert it, and the film actually gets darker and deeper as you get to sort of understand where they come from, but also the bigger networks of crime around them. You might start with the glamour bit, but hopefully it twists and, and you get the true, real picture by the end. I have a lot to tell you about these robbers, and there were many. I first read of the Pink Panthers in a New Yorker magazine article um, by a journalist called David Samuels, and it was absolutely gripping as a, as a feature piece. It was the first time that someone had sort of joined the dots and sort of registered that these were now the most successful diamond thieves of, of all time. But he also gave the context and the, the, the backdrop behind them. It's the story of a modern crime gang, it's the story of the diamond trade, but it's also a story of the, the region that they all come from, the, the former Yugoslavia and the, the Balkans and about what happens when conflicts essentially destroy a, a state and the, the kind of criminality that can rise up in that, in that chaos. It took a long time to sort of convince people that, that they wanted to be in this film and they wanted to be in the film made by me and what kind of film it was. And there were various reasons why it seemed the right time and the right sort of place for them. They love the recognition that this, this is they are the most successful time piece of all time. That's like me winning an Oscar or a, someone winning an Emmy or something. For them, that's the recognition they were looking for. I also realized the two main characters, Mike and Layla, it was actually incredibly cathartic. You know, I spent two days with each character and just talked for solidly for two days. It was amazingly cathartic for them. What, what came out after all these sort of lengthy, intimate interviews was that actually, yeah, they're, they're not happy people. There's relationship breakdown, there's, there's mental breakdown, there's paranoia. Mike, one of the main characters, has seen the film and the reaction that I got was, was positive. I mean, he, he, he had no idea how he was going to do it. The animation was, obviously, he, he didn't know what I was really talking about when I was thinking oh, it's going to be rotoscoped and blah, blah, blah. But he liked it, so I was, I was pleased about that. I finished the film a year ago and there's actually been huge developments in, in that time. Amazingly, the law enforcement uh, sort of agencies around the world have really, really consolidated their efforts and there have been a huge number of arrests of Pink Panthers. So, until a couple of weeks ago, it really felt like the Panthers were, were absolutely on their way out. I mean, literally 189 Panthers are in prison. That's a huge number for a gang. Suddenly there's a jailbreak, suddenly there's another suspected giant heist. There's a possibility that, that they're, you know, some of them are, are fighting back and, and sort of back on, on track. I imagine that's the smaller, a small blip. I think, I still think the bigger picture is actually the Panthers are on their way out. Mm -hmm.